Rachel, what are the prospects of this proposal getting through the, the Senate, do you think? We, the, the new proposal, uh, Mr Porter's new proposal, well, I went to New Zealand last year to actually look at the system. And I'm a bit disappointed to hear the Minister say it's going to replicate it because there are learnings that we can take out of New Zealand that uh, would improve the system. And there's also differences between us and New Zealand. If you, what happened in New Zealand is when they brought the system in, they also ranked up their sanction system. So they dropped a whole lot of people off welfare, off income support, yep. which made their lives uh, more difficult. We do need to be making sure that we are targeting supports for people that meet their needs. Yep. So in, in theory, it sounds good, but we need to see what the government's proposing in terms of how they're going to roll it out. And if they rank up san sanctions over here like they did in New Zealand, we're going to see a significant number of people breached. So it is easy to get people off income support. You can just dump them off, yep. dump them into further poverty. What we're looking for is supports that actually meet people's needs, targeted supports that genuinely help people find work and also address the barriers to them finding work, whether it's education, training or some of the other complex barriers that people face. Um, Rachel, of course, uh, some of the reporting around this <clears throat> this week has been, um, you know, I, I think highly inflammatory. I, th I think it has, has it's created a portrait of young people that is not necessarily true, extrapolating from the case of, you know, two girls who were obviously, yes. you know, having a bit of fun at the expense of a journalist. Um, but, um, you know, of those 580,000 NEETs, the, 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 the report, the OECD report does say there are about 40% who aren't looking for work. Now, there, yes. are, there are many reasons for that potentially, you know, intergenerational unemployment, the lack of prospects, etc. Most people would think though that able-bodied, able-minded people who aren't actively seeking a job or training should have um, some kind of um, income support uh, consequence of that. Well, first off, you need to look at those figures, and you're right, the, the story was inflammatory. And if you actually look at the OECD report, you see that when you start breaking down some of those figures, in fact, it's not 40%. There's, there's, uh, there's a, they're separated into different categories, and you'll see it's lower. But some of those figures, for example, are mothers at home looking, looking after children and with caring responsibilities. So we need to actually carefully look at those figures. Mm. But there is a cohort that has disengaged, and that's because the, often they have dropped out of training for, for whatever reason. There's a high proportion of them that start, for example, in VET, and the system doesn't meet their needs, so they drop out. So then they can't find work either. Mm -hmm. they, there isn't very good transition, although they're trying, the government's trying to target that, the transition from school to employment and training is, is not smooth and it can leave people behind.